write two poems. I would like a husband who writes me love poems. And I'd like to be a lady in bed. <laughs> We're each going to read for about 17 minutes. That's quite hard to do exactly, but I'll keep a watch on the time. I'm reading from a new collection of mine called Other Signs. <coughs> Everyday world. One. Not the developing, nor the first, nor the third. Not the new, nor the old, nor the next. Especially not the next. Just the same world. The one we share here now, and our patient and impatient ancestors shared. And the world, world willing, which children in their smart new clothes or broken school shoes will share. Why not believe in something other than words, lost and found? Why not the world, with a world without end, a world which will end? Two. Children hear what's always been heard the moment before a mother's call to come inside. Shuffle of feet behind them tubercular cough in the doorway. But somewhere else, on a street corner perhaps, someone hears an accordion, pressure air into melody, while the player tilts his head quizzically to hear his own embezzled sound. Three. In the air tonight, like other nights, the rankness of khaki meat, rotting garbage, sweat after a long day's work, but also breathed is star jasmine's scented shadow, the yeasty odor of fermenting beer, the metallic smell of thunder. Four. A torch lights up just what's in front of you, the green eyes of a cat marbling the enigmatic night. A candle holds us ransom to its ancient gaze, or a computer screen in the electric house lights up like a face, quivers with coded messages. Five. In the morning, a door opens and frames a sister's magenta skirt. Water boils into a grey halo of breath. Grandfather rises from his bed to wash and pray, and his wrinkles are the indented folds of a rhino or mountain. Six. Whether you see them today or not, through the wet grass, the threads of spider webs are enmeshed with sun and dew. And even if you're not there, stains are bleached out daily in galvanized tubs. Bright washing blows on the line, the colors of the world, this one, the same one, hung to dry every day, then ironed and packed away. The next poem is called The Rabbi Speaks to the Wind. It behoves us to, it becomes us to, archaic words long lost to their opposites, as in, it is our right to have, we deserve to have. Give us this day, give us this life, give us the key, what we need is what we want, which is more. What is more, give us immortality, our just deserts. It becomes us, the rabbi said to the wind, to know what is enough. The next poem was written in a response to the xenophobia in South Africa in 2008, which most of you will remember. Today I do not love my country. Today I do not love my country. It is venal, it is cruel. Lies are open sewers in the street. Threats scarify the walls. Tomorrow I may defend my land when others x-ray the evidence. Feral shadows, short sharp knives. I may argue our grievous inheritance. On Wednesday I may let the wind and stars fall into my lap. Breathe the air's golden glee, smell the sea salt cellar, run my fingers along the downy arm of the morning. 
I may on Thursday read of a hurt child given refuge and tended by neighbours. Sing with others the famous forgiving man who has forgotten who were enemies, who friends. But today, today I cannot love my country. It staggers in the dark, lurches in a ditch. A curdled mob drives people into pens, brands them like cattle only holds a stranger's hand to press it into fire, strings firecrackers through a child, burns storms and shacks, birds. <coughs> All things considered, not much more could have been done than was done. Nobody culpable, just normal indifference. It could have been worse, everything ruined, whole families buried, long lines of refugees, fires to extinguish, floods to manage, bone beds, craters. Disasters on a bigger scale balanced against this small death, almost weightless, all things considered. <coughs> Some of you will recognize this creature, Wetland Pantherinus. Leopard on my path on an August night, glaring, blotched brown gold, you navigate towards your mate through my small garden in the soggy cape and down the cold stone stair. It's just as they say, yellow vertical stripe, and I hear from afar a deep pulsing snore. Endangered Buffo Pantherinus, you are shipwrecked treasure, a verdigree crest on a wetland coast. Beware dragonfly nymphs, snakes, there's one in the lavender near the gate. Beware the water mongoose and large birds. Beware of me and the rest of us, tramping, driving, blundering across your route. I went to the, um, one of the sites at the Cradle of Humankind uh, with a young guide who forgot to take a torch. She only had her cell phone and she lit up everything with her cell phone. And all I remembered was she told me about how I could get histoplasmosis from the bat droppings. <laughs> so I looked up histoplasmosis when I got home and um, then eventually I wrote this poem cough a bit while I read it. <laughs> Histoplasmosis, a guide's instructions at the cave. If after a few weeks you find yourself coughing, your chest laced in a corset of steel, tell your doctor you were here. Tell him about the bats, their investment in the dark, their dropping spongy fudge, which you probably tramped on in the cave, the spores you may have breathed now inhabiting your lung tissue taking all your breath for the growing fungus inside you. Don't panic. There is medication for this, if you reach an informed doctor early enough. Your airways can be cleaned again, lungs restored to normal size. But remember, a bat flew into your body out of a cave. Your body is now a cave. Your breath is the way in and out of it. Its dark entrance the same as its only exit. Are there any people here who are insomniacs? <laughs> this, is a, this, is a, this is a poem for you. I was in Massachusetts for some weeks and this happened every night. On the hour. At twelve, the street, like me, is not asleep. Not yet. Short, careful steps stumble along. A low voice fidgets to itself, some liquid reminder or incrimination. At one, a flash of lightning in the dark, a motorbike rumbles away. At two, a raccoon, is it, or skunk, drums the garbage bin, something crashes, something with a tail slinks away. At three, measured and cool, a breeze lifts the blind, flaps it against the window frame. Four is here and everywhere, Night's low point for the cruel, the brave, and those praying for release. 
At five, something fresh wafts upstairs, unidentified sweet foreign blossom insinuates into the uncertain morning. At six, first light enters the room like an anxious refugee. At seven, I fall asleep. <laughs> Secret rage or loneliness, sorrow's marrow bone, gulped happiness. But your brother chronicles one story of your childhood. Sisters rhyme another. Mother sings an old song at her piano. Even father's silence tells a tale from beyond the shadows. And the dogs, no doubt, could chase the balls you threw to their version of your life. For we own each other's childhoods. They sway and tilt and dance in our family arms as well. And as the dance itself composes, recomposes patterns in its steps, some memories move forward, pirouette, while others bow and leave the room, the dancer's card half empty and half full. Gravity zone. I left you this morning but arrived here yesterday, my dearest. The arterial journey took me upwards, or was it forwards, to the heart of another place. The sun rose as expected, but it was behind you when in front of me, and it fell out of sight shortly before or afterwards. Transported to a country behind or in front of yours, <laughs> west and east are only words, not directions. Now I am here, you are there. No men children on a seesaw when tilt away from each other's sight. But my weight keeps you aloft when I am grounded. Yours keeps me the same. Though it feels this time we have tipped off the world, never to meet in time or space again. As the present keeps moving backwards instead of forwards, as we have been led to believe. Last move. My mother says dryly, this is my last move, to a smaller house, shelves fitted just right for her height, shower with seat and handle grip, caregivers next door. I say, not so fast, you may meet a prince, be transported to a castle through a snowy landscape, fur on your head, a muff to warm your hands, or maybe a travelling man will win your heart with a bed under the stars. But she knows, we know, the last move will be to a place we only hear rumours about. Some say a mansion with many rooms, some say silence and space, but certainly a place far away where daughters can't help out. <coughs> flaring in the mirrors of Versailles, incandescent palace fireflies. Now, aging, my friends are beautiful, the way tarnished silver is beautiful. Individual, well-worn, dented by daily household use. Two more poems. <laughs> 